my macaron. All right. <laughs> Hi everyone. So today's video is going to be about my experience going to college at Colorado State University. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Wendy. Just for a little background information, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. I lived there 18 years. And then obviously I came out to Fort Collins, Colorado to go to CSU. And just a disclaimer, I feel like it's kind of a societal cultural expectation nowadays that every 18 year old right out of high school goes to college. That's not for everyone and I know that a lot of people like to travel for a year some people go into the military some people just go into getting a job they start work other people stay home and help out their parents so there's a lot of things you can do after high school you do not have to go to college to be successful per se and it's definitely not for everyone I'm just someone that I always loved school I was always kind of a teacher's pet and a nerd and so I knew I wanted to go to college to continue my education because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life so college just made the most sense and I was also really lucky because my parents saved up money for me to go to college so it was kind of set in stone that I would do that but it just so happened that I also wanted to go to college so sorry if you noticed this in the corner of my mouth I got a cold sore a week ago and it is just taking its sweet time leaving so we're just gonna keep on trucking and pretend like it's not there Anyway, that's kind of my background and just a little disclaimer for anyone watching this, especially if you're a senior in high school or a junior in high school, you're thinking about going to college. Just keep in mind that it's not for everyone, but if it is for you, hopefully this video is helpful. So when I was a senior in high school, I applied to five colleges. I did University of Washington in Seattle, Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. I did CSU in Fort Collins. Also, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, and then University of Connecticut in, I think it's called Coors, the town. Uh, I may be wrong. I applied to those five schools, and the thing they all had in common was they all had a really good health and exercise science program, and they all had a marching band, or like a pep band. Those were the two things I wanted. I really knew that I wanted to study the human body and exercise because when I was 14, my um, mom was diagnosed with cancer, and I, I watched my mom spend a summer in the hospital, and that was really hard for me, but um, it kind of opened my eyes up to the world of medicine and what we can do to help our bodies and just live long healthy lives was really interesting to me because it felt really imminent and important at the time so i knew that that's what i was interested in and then also all of high school i played the trombone and i knew i wanted to keep going into music and playing that as much as i could not as a profession but i just wanted to do it on the side those are two things that all the schools i applied to had in common and got into four of them i didn't get into university of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. That's a really hard school to get into and I'm kind of grateful I didn't get in because it was kind of like my not my dream school, but it was definitely like my reach school. And I remember telling my mom I didn't get in and I was kind of bummed and she was like North Carolina is would kind of have been a big culture shock at 18 going from Seattle like they're just very different places and on complete opposite sides of the country so I think it was a blessing that I didn't get in I just wasn't meant to go there but the other four schools I did get into and I was lucky to because of my grades get a scholarship to all four of them but the very first school I got into was CSU and they offered me the biggest scholarship so that was definitely a plus and they were like the first school to accept me so that felt really like special I was like oh like they want me I got my acceptance letter I think in like November or something and I had applied in September or something so it was a very quick acceptance so that made me feel good and CSU in all honesty isn't that difficult of a school to get into it's just kind of Colorado State School, but it's very good for agricultural stuff and just kind of had a lot of options. So I toured UW and NAU and CSU. I never got a chance to tour University of Connecticut or UNC, obviously because I didn't get into UNC, but University of Connecticut was also, you know, on the complete opposite side of the country from Washington, so it didn't really make sense to go tour. After I toured UW, NAU, and CSU, it was like very obvious that CSU is where I wanted to go. I really liked their campus. Basically, if you're familiar with CSU, it's in the shape of a rectangle, like it is very clearly definable like a campus. It's not in the middle of a city and it's not super spread out. That's something I didn't really like about UW is that University of Washington is a great school, but they're right in the middle of Seattle and things can be really far apart. But the campus itself is beautiful. One of my best friends goes there and I would have been really happy to go there, but I'm just not a huge city person. And then NAU had a cool campus, but it was just a little small, like the town of Flagstaff itself 
felt a little too tiny for me and Fort Collins felt like a college town. And it just like was very inviting. Like everyone here seems really outdoorsy and the campus was super green. Like you can see the mountains from the student center. And I really liked all the buildings that I toured. So after I came here and visited with my mom, I knew that CSU was the place for me. They also had a really good marching band program. Oh, there's Flash. CSU also had a really good marching band program that I really thought would be cool to join. I had looked at them on YouTube and whatnot, and combination of the campus, the health and exercise science department, and then them having a marching band kind of sealed the deal. Another piece of this puzzle was that my parents, after I graduated from high school, they were retiring and they decided to move from Seattle, Washington to Pueblo, Colorado. For those of you that don't know, Pueblo is just three hours straight south of Fort Collins. If Fort Collins is up here, it's just a straight line down. I don't wanna think that I followed my parents. I didn't like people thinking I was just following them wherever they went to be close to them as like a safety blanket. But given that my mom had cancer and she was in a really good place at the time, she had recovered from a lot of things, she was mobile. Um, I didn't need to be close to her and my dad, but I kind of just thought it would be nice to not have to fly on a plane to see them for Christmas, you know? So that was kind of an added benefit of, I was like, oh, I'm close enough to visit them, but I didn't have a car. So even though they were only three hours away, I couldn't go visit them every weekend. That isn't something I made a habit out of. And being in marching band, I had a football game every weekend. So I'll get into all that. For freshman year, I decided to live in Parmalee Hall, which if you go to CSU, you know what that is. It was nice because it was a two person dorm and we shared a bathroom with the person next to us. The one thing I didn't want was communal bathrooms because I'm kind of a neat freak and it just weirded me out the thought of sharing a shower with everyone in the hall. So that was like my one thing I wanted and I'm really glad I did that because I did the random roommate thing. I basically like filled out a survey and they paired me with someone that they thought would be good for me. And I am very lucky because the girl I roomed with freshman year, I actually lived with all four years of college. Her name Name's Sasha her and I are still really good friends and she might be watching this I got really lucky literally the first night like we slept in there together um, we bonded like right away just getting straight into deep talk and we're really good friends from there on out we definitely had our struggles freshman year she had a boyfriend and I did not and um, their relationship um, was a little on the rocks at times, but also like I was not used to living with someone that had a boyfriend or whatnot. So we definitely like butted heads a bit, but we got over it and then we decided to sophomore year move into an apartment together. And we were there for the last three years of college and I am really happy with my decision to live with her all four years because she's one of my best friends. Like I consider her like a sister for life now. Like I definitely think she'll be at my wedding. Um, and I feel like that's kind of not super common nowadays. I feel like it's more common to be friends with the person you live with, but then to go separate ways after freshman year or maybe even after sophomore year. But if you happen to be matched randomly with someone that you get along with, I would definitely say try to make it work because having someone that you've done college through the beginning of things is just really comforting because like she's been through kind of everything with me and I've always had her as a friend I can lean on and talk to and hang out with. So it's definitely an advantage if you're put with someone that you like and get along with as friends. I don't have too much to share on if you don't get along with your college roommate like right away. Like I know some people that moved out and switched roommates right away and that's really unfortunate and sounds really stressful. So I would definitely say in that circumstance, talk to your RA because the RAs that are in charge of your hall, they're there to help you and kind of resolve conflict. But also if you really want to get out of a bad or uncomfortable situation, there are things that a lot of people do freshman year to get more comfortable and move things around. So the fall semester of my freshman year was definitely overwhelming because I overloaded my class schedule. So I took 17 credits and the maximum at CSU is 18. And then I was also doing college marching band, which at CSU rehearsals were Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So two hours every other day and then basically all day Saturday. We had like a start time five hours before the game and then the game lasted at least four hours. So Saturdays were really long days. I think I'm gonna make a whole video about college marching band because I have a lot to say and it was one of the best decisions I think I ever made in college but it's definitely also not for everyone. So 
Anyway, freshman semester was just really overwhelming, but it was also a lot of fun. I was tired a lot and definitely like had my days where I just cried from stress. However, I don't really regret overloading my class schedule. That is good for you if you function well when you're busy. I do best when I have things to do each day. I have a schedule like keeping me busy. If I have too much downtime, I get lazy and I'm not super productive. So that happened to be a good system for me. And it also helped because freshman year, I wasn't taking that many hard classes. So I overloaded with 17 credits, but they were all pretty easy classes. So it didn't kill me. I think I would recommend doing this at the start of your college experience because when you're a junior, you do not want to be taking 17 credits because you're often in the hardest part of your major. So I think it benefited me to take a lot of credits at first so that as I got into the end of my sophomore year, junior year, senior year, I could take less and less credits. And the classes were getting harder, but it wasn't as stressful as freshman year because I didn't have six classes. I had like three or four that were just a bit more challenging. So if you function best busy, I would recommend that because it really worked out well for me. Yeah, freshman year was really positive. Uh, the summer after freshman year, I went home, spent a couple weeks with my parents, and then we went to California to see my sister graduate college. And then I spent most of the summer back in Washington, like I was kind of road tripping with my sister and just kind of crashing on my friends and family members' couches. And that was really fun. I definitely felt homesick after my freshman year of college because all my friends from high school, we had all scattered and everybody went back to Washington for the summer except me because my parents lived in Colorado. So I'm really glad I was able to do that after freshman year, but that was the last summer I did that. Going into sophomore year, I again took classes, kept myself busy, I was doing marching band. And the summer after sophomore year, I decided to take a summer class and so I stayed in Colorado. and. Sophomore year was interesting because I trained for my first marathon. This was something I had kind of been building up to because senior year of high school, I ran my first half marathon with my friend Signe. And then freshman year of college, I ran the horse tooth half marathon here in Colorado. I didn't mention that, but I did that spring of freshman year. That was kind of a big thing that kept me busy and kept me physically active when I was out of marching band. So sophomore year, I kind of spent six months training for the Seattle Rock and Roll Marathon. And funny enough, uh, in December of my sophomore year, my roommate Sasha, she was done seeing her ex-boyfriend. They had broken up and she decided to go on a dating app and she met this guy and we went to a like Christmas party he was having. It wasn't really a Christmas party. It was just a party in December. There I met this guy named Nick um, and in spring him and I started to date. And that's another video I could make just about boys and relationships in college in general because I could get more into that but basically him and I started to date spring of 2017 and then that summer I took a college class I was actually retaking a class I took in the spring that I got a D in it was the first time I had ever gotten a D and it was really upsetting so I retook that class and got a B but that kind of led to me not going home to Washington for the summer after sophomore year I stayed in Colorado retook a class I was seeing Nick and I went back home to Washington for one week to run that marathon so yeah Junior year, things got a little rough. Um, so fall semester of junior year was probably the worst because they say that after two years of living with someone, that's normally when people like hit a fork in the road of like wanting to keep living together or you have problems and you wanna stop living together. And Sasha and I definitely were having a rough time. We weren't really getting along and we're just kind of upset with each other really often so it felt like we weren't super close anymore it felt like we were really distant friends and we just needed to grow apart and also i was doing marching band and my director at the start of that semester had announced that it would be his last one and something that happened at csu was they built a new stadium this kind of like threw things out of whack because they demolished the old stadium that I had marched in for two years and they built a new one. And junior year was the first year we were at that stadium and everything was new. Like all our traditions had kind of gone down the drain or changed and it didn't really feel the same, but also 
by junior year, I was still taking a lot of hard classes. I was having trouble with my roommate. I was kind of sorting out how to be a student and a girlfriend and a friend. I had never dated anyone before, so I was definitely trying to find a balance and struggling. Basically, when my director announced he was going to leave CSU, I decided that was gonna be my last semester of marching band. And again, I think I'll make a whole video about that because I think I made the right choice for me, just personally, my the way I was feeling at that time and how things played out in the next year. But anyway, fall of junior year was definitely a rough time. Things weren't super great, but um, we made do. And spring semester of junior year, so that was 2018, began kind of the hardest year of my life, which sounds dramatic, but if you watched Vlogmas of 2018, 2018 was just a marathon in that not an actual marathon that I ran, but I, it was January and um, I was in a pretty good place with Nick. My mom was having some issues with her health and that was really hard for me to watch. Um, I believe Sasha and I were on better terms, but then right after I got out of spring semester, I went right into summer school. I decided to take three classes. I was retaking one called Human Gross Anatomy. I did that with my girlfriend, Bianca, so that made it bearable. But later in the summer, I also took a statistics class and I also think I took an honors course. I can't really remember, but I took three classes and in the course of that summer, my mom's health just really started to decline. She broke both her arms and I basically spent spent every two weeks for the summer class I took with Bianca we would study on one section of the human body for two weeks and then take an exam and at the end of every two weeks I would go home and help like take care of my mom and just like visit her because being apart from her was really hard I just went the whole summer like two weeks studying hard go home two weeks studying hard go home it was just like rigorous and so emotional and I remember she'd broken her right arm on 4th of July and then two weeks later she broke the other arm this is why I don't like the month of July I have very negative connotations with that month so that summer was just brutal and it basically felt like I never had a break because I went from spring semester to summer school and that is something I wouldn't recommend. I was actually able to graduate in three and a half years which again was a blessing in disguise given some details I'll elaborate on later but I think summer break is something that's very valuable for people's mental health. Like my roommate Sasha, I think there was a semester or two at least where she did retake one class, but she would also work. And I think one class was like a good limit because she was still able to have a life and like work and make money. And I wasn't working at the time. So I was just kind of putting all my energy into school and the stress of doing well in those three classes and what was going on with my mom, like just wrecked me. It was a terrible time. And so anyway, I don't think I would recommend that to many people. It worked out in the end for me because in the fall semester of my senior year, I found out I was going to be able to graduate in December. I was supposed to graduate in May of 2019. I finished in December of 2018. And my senior year, my senior semester was by far the funnest time because due to all the overloading I did freshman and sophomore year, my senior semester, I only had two classes. I had a senior honors seminar and then I had a senior health and exercise science seminar. And those were both only on Tuesday, Thursday. So I had no class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And in the meantime, I was working on my senior thesis. Um, I forgot to mention, I was also a part of the honors program at CSU, which was very advantageous. I decided to do that senior year of high school because I got first pick at classes, like honor students were given the first pick of classes at the end of a semester. So that really helped me because I never got waitlisted for a class. I was able to finish everything with excess time because I never got waitlisted for a class. That was a huge advantage of being a part of the honors program. And I also met some really nice people and it was a good challenge. Something I'm really proud and happy that CSU did is that for every honors student, they make you do a senior thesis, which sounds really intimidating, but it's actually a really fun project that you get to pick the topic of. You have to find an advisor and a committee member and basically work on it for like a whole semester, if not two. And I spent 
that summer of 2018 starting to work on it and then fall I really started to get into it I found a great advisor I had a really good mentor so that's kind of how I spent my extra time on those Monday Wednesday Fridays I would work on my thesis go into the lab and get help for it my senior semester was just really fun because the start of it I turned 21 and the day of my birthday was the Rocky Mountain Showdown which in Colorado that's the game where CSU plays its rival school CU and so it was just a really great day I spent it with Sasha and um, I met up at the game with my boyfriend Nick and our good friend Alex who's now my roommate it was just a good way to start the semester and then from there on out like things were good because I only had class two days a week was really happy with how my thesis came out I remember it was in November it was a Monday I presented it and it went really well I was super proud of myself for those of you that are interested I did my thesis on an exercise manual for individuals living with chronic pain this was really close to me and like my experience because my mom lived with chronic pain so it was super dear to my heart and I put a lot of time and energy into it and I was really proud with how it came out and also I feel like the ability to do a senior thesis makes me a bit more marketable for graduate school because in graduate school you do a thesis almost always and I already have experience doing like a literature review and presenting it to a board of sorts and I didn't have to defend my thesis which is probably the scariest part but I had practice doing parts of a thesis which I think was really great that CSU gave me that opportunity so I'm very thankful that I was in the honors program to get to be a part of that. The last few weeks of college kind of went downhill because if you know me personally or saw a video I made a while ago and actually deleted, my mom broke her hip. She fell down and broke her hip um, the Thursday of the week I had presented my thesis. And then I went home that weekend to take care of her and be with her. And then the last two weeks were kind of finals, but I had a paper due and then a project due in my HES class. That got over with really quickly and I just spent as much time as possible with my mom. And then I graduated on the 15th of December. And my mom wasn't able to go, obviously, because she was um, had to be flat. She was in a hospital bed and my dad decided to stay with her because he knew that coming up here would just have made him sad, which I totally understood. I was really lucky because my sister, my two best friends back home, Jenny and Allie, and then like my aunts and uncles, some of my cousins, they were all able to come see me graduate. So I was really grateful for that because I know a lot of family members can't come to graduation and it was definitely tough not having my parents there. Um, but I was totally like, I knew that they needed to be at home and rest. Obviously and my mom couldn't get up here and there was actually a live stream of my graduation that they were able to watch on a computer. So that kind of made everything okay in, despite of all the chaos. Just a fun last little story was the last week of like college leading up to my graduation. I got strep throat and I had never had it before. So I was really lucky for that. But I went to the doctor, they gave me like amoxicillin or penicillin, something. A few days later, I had an allergic reaction to it. And so some of my graduation pictures, like up close, you can see the hives on my arms. It was just like so stressful and awful. So the last three weeks of college were kind of rough if you could say that. Anyway, that is kind of my whole college story in a bit of a hodgepodge. I apologize if some of those things seemed out of order, but um, I really loved going to CSU. I think if I had a chance to do it all over again, I would go to CSU. I just really like Fort Collins as a place. It is so fun and just such a college town. Everyone here is very athletic and interested in being outside. And now that I'm 21, this place is famous for all the breweries we have. I'm making it a goal to go to all 22 before I leave. And especially before I leave Colorado, I wanna hike a 14er because that's like the thing to do around here is there's the Rocky Mountain National Park and there's so many um, mountains that are at 14,000 feet and it's like a huge accomplishment to climb them. So that's something else I wanna do. I guess I would just recommend if you're thinking about college, go somewhere that has things that you're interested in trying, even if you're afraid to try them because I had never done legitimate marching band. My high school didn't really have a program, so I was intimidated to try that, but I'm so glad I did. It's where I met most of my friends. And go to a place where you have a lot of options for a major, because if you don't know what you wanna do, that's okay and that's totally normal. I just so happened to have a few things happen in my life that led me towards this path, and I knew it was the right place for me, but go to a school where you have a lot of options because if you don't know what you want to do at least you can change you're not like stuck in the few majors they offer and you have a lot of choices to try things out and yeah people aren't lying when they say that college is some of the best years of your life i definitely had a wonderful time and 
I'm really glad I was able to graduate in three and a half years, like I was saying, because after my mom broke her hip, her health really went downhill and I was able to spend the uh, last four months of her life with her. So that is just um, kind of a blessing in all of this and that even though I had really stressful hard times, I think everything worked out for a reason because I was meant to be close to my mom and spend as much time with her as possible. And I have a really good group of friends up here. I've met a lot of really nice guys through Nick, like his group of friends and then Sasha and all the friends I made through marching band. So I just feel really lucky. And I think if you're considering going to college, you should apply and definitely give it a chance. And if anything I said is of interest to you, you should definitely apply to CSU because it is just beautiful here. And I do like how green and sunny it is all the time. Sometimes the sun gets a little boring to me and I miss the clouds and the rain, but I think that's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> so yeah, if you like this video, you should subscribe. You should follow me on Instagram. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. And I think my next video might be on my experience doing college marching band because now that I think about it, that's a really interesting video that I would probably have watched before coming to college just to see how other people like it because CSU is um, a really fun school for that, but it's not so intense as like Ohio State University's marching band. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.